Hi everyone, and welcome back to English with Yubin. And I know I am aware that I am a week late, but basically, um, it's been pretty chaotic in my personal life. I've been doing job interviews, so my time has pretty much been used preparing for them, making scenarios that they could ask me.、Um, so yeah, that is why we are a week late. But hopefully. They will be done by the end of this week, so we should be back to our normal every Wednesday video schedule. Hopefully, God willing. But anyway, for today's video, I am back with another three chapters from the book Wonder. We will get through it, I promise.、Um, but today we're going to be looking over the chapters: Nice Mrs. Garcia, Jack, Will, Julian, and Charlotte, and the Grand Tour. But Yeah, that is the plan for today. So let's get started.、Hmm. So,、um, <laughs> yeah, looking back at the things that I highlighted, there really wasn't a lot in these three chapters. So this video is probably going to be quite a short one, which you might be grateful for. You might prefer shorter videos.、Um, so yeah, there isn't a lot of content in this video, but. We'll get started anyway. Okay, so the first thing that I picked out from the chapter "Nice Mrs. Garcia" was the phrase "Who runs the place," and you can also say "I run the place," "She runs the place," but whenever you use the phrase "Who runs the place," sorry, <laughs> runs the place, you're talking about who's in charge. So, for example. Here we're talking about Mrs. Garcia, who's actually the assistant to the headmaster, and she's helping with administrative work. I guess、um, she helps him keep his schedule all nice, nicely sorted out.、Um, so she basically keeps the school on its feet.、Um, so she helps the person who is actually in charge.、Um, so yeah, if you're using the phrase. Runs the place. You're talking about whoever's in charge.、Um, so if you're talking about like the CEO of a company, they're the people who run the company. You know, they're the one who runs the place. If that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, if you're trying to talk about whoever's in charge, you can use the phrase "who runs the place." And the second and last thing that I highlighted in this chapter was "you've just made my day." And you can use this phrase if someone said something really nice to you that's made you really happy. Then you can say, "Oh, you've just made my day." So, for example, for me, if someone compliments my outfit or if they've complimented my makeup or my hair, then I'll say, "Oh, you've really made my day."、Um, yeah. So if someone compliments you, if they say something really nice to you. Um, you can use the phrase "You've made my day" or "You've just made my day"、um, if it makes you happy. So <laughs> that's when you use that phrase. If someone says something nice to you, someone compliments you, then you can say "You've just made my day" because you've made me really happy. And the next chapter we have is Jack, Will, Julian, and Charlotte. Jack, Will is not two names because sometimes you have English names that have. Two first names. Jack is his first name, and Will is his last name. But I don't know why they call him Jack Will. <laughs>、um, but yeah, that's the chapter we're moving on to next. And the first phrase that we have from this chapter is "I wasn't really paying much attention." So the phrasal verb is to pay attention to, and if you're not really paying attention to it, then you're not concentrating. Maybe you're distracted. Um, but if you're not paying attention, your whole focus isn't on what it should be on. So, for example, if there's a lecture on a subject that you're not really interested in, then you can say, "Yeah, I got bored, so I wasn't really paying much attention to the lecturer." But if you're not saying paying attention to, you can just say, "I wasn't paying attention." In which case, it just means you're not focusing. So you can be paying attention to something.、Um, so, for example, you aren't paying attention to the lecturer, or you could be paying attention to the lecturer, 
or you could just say I wasn't paying attention or I was paying attention um, if you were focusing. So yeah, it's are you focused and are you actually focusing on something? So that's where the difference is. You could not have been paying attention or you can say I wasn't paying attention to something. That's the difference. The second thing we have is a Rubik's type cube. And I'm sure lots of you have actually heard of a Rubik's cube. It's basically a cube puzzle that you match up. So all the colors are the same on every side. Um, but yeah, it's just a little puzzle. There are world championships for it, I think, where it's the fastest, like the fastest person to match the puzzle wins the championship. I don't know, but yeah, I know lots of people get very into the Rubik's Cube and that's the simplest version. So the actual cube is the original. I think there are something like, I've seen lots of different versions of it. There are really difficult looking ones, um, but I used to just, I can do one side, I can do one side, but I can't do the whole cube. Um, lots of people get really motivated by it and I've seen people just take off the stickers and <laughs> match it up that way, but that's kind of cheating. Um, but yeah, that's just what a Rubik's type cube is. It's just a cube puzzle. And the next thing we have is a jack-o'-lantern. And typically you see these around Halloween, but basically it's a pumpkin carving with a candle inside. I know it sounds really, really strange, but basically you get your friends together or your family and you just have an evening or a day of carving pumpkins. Um, people get really, really into their pumpkin carvings. Um, I've seen sculptures, there are like actual artwork pieces of jack-o'-lanterns, but the most simple one that you can do is just two triangles for the eyes and then like a smiley face, and then you cut a ring in the top so that you have a lid and then scrape out the inside seeds put your small tea light candle in it put the lid back on um, and then you leave it outside and it's for the trick-or-treaters so during halloween you get little children sometimes not always it's not always little children basically is what i'm trying to say sometimes you have like teenagers and grown adults doing trick-or-treating um, and if you don't know what trick-or-treating is, it's when they come knocking on people's doors, you go knocking on your neighbor's doors and they just give you candy. <laughs> they give you sweets. Sometimes you get, um, I think I got fruit once um, from an elderly couple, but yeah, basically people stock up on chocolates and sweets and people come knocking on your doors and yeah, that's what trick-or-treating is. But basically, People put the jack-o'-lanterns in a window, like on the windowsill, so you can see it outside. Or sometimes people leave it on their doorsteps. Um, and it's basically like an invitation for trick-or-treaters <laughs> trick to come over and knock on their doors. Um, yeah, it's like jack-o'-lanterns are the pumpkin carvings. And it's an indication of our house has sweets, our house has um, chocolate, so come knock on our door and we'll give it to you. Um, sometimes um, houses, not all houses, do the jack-o'-lanterns, so you don't normally go knocking on those doors, but yeah, the houses that have the jack-o'-lanterns on their doorstep or in the windows, you go knocking as trick-or-treaters. But yeah, that was a long-winded explanation for what a jack-o'-lantern is. That's all it is, a pumpkin carving with a small tea light candle inside of it. And then we have the word homeroom, although I think homeroom is used more in America than in the UK, at least in the schools that I've been in anyway. Typically in the UK, we call it a tutor group or a form, but they all mean the same thing. Tutor group, form, homeroom, all the same. But basically, it's not a class where you learn things. Um, it's just you register together in the morning and in the afternoon. Sometimes you have tutor time or form time in the morning, not so much in the afternoon, but you might do school notices together. 
you might be discussing things from assemblies together as a form, um, as well as going through reports. But yeah, that's basically what a homeroom form tutor group is. It's basically like your home class is the best way I can describe it. Um, but yeah, that's just where you register together. That's the, that's the main purpose of forms. It's just to register together, um, discuss issues in assemblies, go through reports. Um, but yeah, that's basically what a homeroom is. And then we have the phrase, like their lives depended on it. And another way of saying this is to save my life. So for example, I can't sing. So I could say, I cannot sing to save my life. Or I could say, I could not sing even if my life depended on it. So both those phrases are saying the same thing. If my life was in danger and the only thing that was going to save me was my singing talent, um, I would be dead. <laughs> very, very dead. Um, so yeah, if you're trying to describe something that you can't do even if your life depended on it or you can't do it to save your life, then basically you're saying if you were given the two options of you die <laughs> or you do the task or the thing that you can't do, um, you will be dead is basically what you're trying to say. So for example, I could not sing even if my life depended on it. We'll say it once more. I could not sing even if my life depended on it. Or the second way you can say it, I cannot sing to save my life. One more. I cannot sing to save my life. So I could not sing even if my life depended on it or I cannot sing to save my life. And finally we're on to the last chapter, the grand tour, and I only highlighted one thing from this chapter and that was a Bunsen burner. So some of you might know what a Bunsen burner is if you've done chemistry, but basically they're like small tube looking things and it's where fire comes from in your chemistry lessons. Um, they're mostly found in the laboratories or the labs for short. Um, but yeah, you mostly use them for chemistry um, or sometimes I guess physics if you stretch it, sometimes biology, but all you need to know, a Bunsen burner is like a small tube thing that you attach to the gas that comes out of the pipes. And yeah, it just lights a flame. Um, you can put it on a safety flame, which is the orange one that looks like the flame on your candle, but you can also put it to a blue flame, which is hotter than an orange flame or the safety flame. And you can even put it to a roaring flame, which is like, it sounds quite loud and you have a small blue cone on the flame. It's chemistry. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, you attach it to the gas tap, turn the gas on, light it with a match, um, and then you have fire. And that's what a Bunsen burner is. Um, so yeah. Well, everyone, that was everything from the next three chapters of the book Wonder. And if you look on the channel playlist, there's a playlist for Wonder. So all the chapters that we cover as we go through the book will be in that playlist. Um, but yeah, that's everything that <laughs> I wanted to cover in those three chapters. There wasn't a lot because it was more introducing Augie to the new school, um, meeting the three new students. Um, but yeah. Peace. <laughs> I will see you guys all again next week. Hopefully you found this video somewhat enjoyable, entertaining, and also useful. Um, but yeah, like I said, comment anything that you want me to cover if you read those three chapters and there was still something that you weren't quite sure of, put it in the comments and I will cover it again in my next video. And yeah. I'll see you guys all again next week. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.